day and welcome to today's conversation podcast. We have a special program. You know there have been recent developments regarding uh, activities that drive our economy, the sale of um, KCM to Vedanta and, and the sale of Mopani to IRH of uh, United Arab Emirates. I've invited the FDD president, uh, Honorable Edith Nawakwi, to come and help me discuss this matter. Honorable Nawakwi, welcome back to the Conversation Podcast. Good uh, evening, uh, Ambassador Mwamba. It's a pleasure to be here. I want to thank you for the effort you are putting in informing the nation on important national issues. It's a lot of time on your part. I do hope that our brothers and sisters who are always in the habit of criticizing others do understand what it takes to contribute in some way to information yeah. for the nation. Without information, you can't make decisions. Yeah. The Mopani and KCM, I think, form some of the largest mines in Africa, some of the largest mines here in our country. If run profitably, they do anchor our economy. And the developments around them, I think, also raises similar concerns. You cannot just dispose of those assets without public scrutiny, without public attention, or we, without giving especially the public, adequate information. Let's start with the issue of um, Mopani. No, before we go to Mopani, KCM. Government decided to discontinue matters that were in court and decided to return the asset to Vedanta. What are your thoughts about Vedanta and KCM? I have uh, repeatedly said that uh, one of the richest assets that is... Uh, in the hands of government is Konkola uh, Deep. This mine is called Konkola Deep because you have to go kilometers underground to find the metals, the minerals. But the technologies are changing, and uh, it's a very, very rich asset. In fact, at its vesting, this was supposed to be a part of the development. And our future was being projected on the possibility of Concola Deep coming into development. The development of Concola Deep is, is now almost uh, 13 years behind. So whatever projections that were at investing the mine into Vedanta have been uh, out of the way. You see, the challenge that we have is that uh, some people think they are smarter than God. That's a challenge. Uh -huh. And um, the sad part of it is that uh, we have our African leaders, and how can they included, who have an inferiority complex. They think that anything good must come out of outside the continent of Africa. And as such, you cannot think that uh, Vedanta, after being kicked out, is uh, anything to go by. It's like you puke and you go to lick your own puke. That's basically what is happening. And uh, I feel very sad when we comment we are being called hoodlums. But the truth is that Vedanta is a bankrupt company. Vedanta was involved in swindling the Zambian people. And I want to say that uh, I don't know at what point Vedanta would take over the mine. Because the minute this uh, operator walks in, Standard Chartered South Africa will walk in and liquidate the mine. Because what uh, this gentleman did, the share, main shareholder of Vedanta, he went to KCM and purported to have lent KCM a total of $500 million. Hardly Six, seven months down the road, the same gentleman went back to the mine and said, listen, I think they knew that they were being delisted on the London Stock Exchange. They were being delisted in, New, in India. They were being kicked out of the stock market because they are basically crooks. So what they did, they recorded that $500 million. And when they record the $500 million, 
They said, you must pay us like yesterday. KCM, called Vedanta, KCM and ZCCM, they then go to South Africa. Uh, they, they go to borrow that money. They encourage them to borrow that money to pay the shareholder. But what did they use to borrow? When you go to the bank to borrow, you must have collateral. They used the assets, all the assets of KCM, lock, step, and barrel, including Concola Deep. They went and mortgaged them to, to the South African bank to borrow money to pay the shareholder. And when you look at the books, you will know that that was just a mere book entry where they purport to lend the company money. Then six months down the road, they say, can you give us back the money? We are the shareholders. If you are the owner of the, an asset, if you run, a, a, say, a bakery, you borrow money as a shareholder to, to run the bakery, to beef up the bakery, why would you recall the loan? In and fact, it's the, only because you are a crook. In and fact, the audit uh, shows that they owe Stanchart of South Africa $700 million. Because when, yeah. the, when this gentleman, I don't know his name, I don't even want to know his name, he, I feel very angry. If I saw him on the street of Lusaka, I would straight away take him to Chimbuagai. Because what he did, that 500 million, he charged 12% per annum plus arrangement fees. Mm -hmm. So when they were recalling the money, the company had no way but to borrow all the money that they needed. 600 million plus whatever cream they had put. So within a year, within, with, in less than a year, this gentleman from India had, give, had purported given money to the uh, uh, KCM, gone back and recorded the loan and made a profit on a company which is supposed to be his, totally crooked. And, and therefore, as we sit here, I hope that uh, the South African bank has uh, been paid, but uh, this is the information that we want from Haga Inde's government and his Mr. Gawuswe. To come up, to, before you call me a hoodlum, just answer simple questions from a classroom. Has the standard chartered bank South Africa been paid? Have they removed the mortgage on the assets of KCM? If they haven't, what's the structure that you have in place to be able to secure the assets? Because mm -hmm. The, the, your successors took over KCM in order to secure the assets because they knew that there was going to be run by banks and creditors on KCM. So the best way to secure the asset was to take it and put it under what was called receivership. Now, uh, we know last time we talked about how they've messed up, they've even taken someone from Grand Tonton to be aiding the government receiver. It's all crookery. And, uh, you know, uh, for me, I, I listen, I try to observe, I understand, I say, why, why? Uh, when new presidents are being sworn in, they, they hold the Bible in their hand, meaning we are Christians. The Bible is a constitution. And you are saying, I swear by this constitution to uphold a lesser constitution. So your God is watching you. I wonder what happens when you swear our African leaders, where they just forget that they've made a covenant with God. I want to draw you to Proverbs chapter 6, verses mm. 16 mm. to 19. I shall mm. not attempt to read, but Ambassador, please read it. And read it nicely and slowly. Proverbs, because Proverbs chapter 6, verses uh, uh, 16 to 19. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, and, and these are people who are swearing by the Bible that they shall uphold the Constitution. The Constitution requires that you secure the assets of the Republic. That's the Constitution. Because the Bible provides for resources for each nation. We are bequeathed with gold, copper, molybdenum, uh, cobalt, good waters, and you are giving chunks of land to foreigners. You are breaching the constitution of God. So read that. Maybe from you, they can understand. They will not call you a hoodlum. <laughs> if I read that verse, they will say, Proverbs 6, 
16, I think to 19, there are six things the Lord hates. Seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue. A lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent blood. Murderers. A, a heart that devises wicked schemes. Wicked schemes. A feet that are quick to rush into evil. A false witness who pours out lies. And the person who stirs up conflict in the community. Now, God detests liars with passion. That's why in some other broadcasts I say, don't ask me to love you. I detest liars with passion. And if he, by my saying that uh, God detects, detects liars with passion, you don't want to understand what we are saying. We are saying that uh, you, the transactions which the uh, UPND government are doing, they are lying to the Zambian people. They are lying to God. Before God, they are using the Bible to lie to the Zambian people. And uh, when you lie, what are the consequences of lying? I think you need to read Acts chapter 5, verse 1. This is a story of Anania and uh, Safila. And uh, you will maybe understand that uh, by what you're doing, you are mm. actually creating your Acts own death trap. 5, today... We are dealing one to with, 11, one with, to 11. with Prophet Nawakwi. <laughs> I'm not a prophet. I'm just, uh, I just, uh, in my own humble way, yeah. try yeah. to find Wisdom. that, that uh, if you want to live, the book of Proverbs provides the pathway to life. Whether mm -hmm. you want to be a wife, mm -hmm. a successful business person, a successful leader, it is there. Mm. Because Solomon was the richest man on earth that has ever lived, but also the wisest leader. Mm. You can be both. You can be rich. But what I see in this leadership is that they only want to be rich. They don't want to be wise. Yeah. They, don't want to, they don't want to re refrain from theft. Mm. They want to steal and still be leaders. Mm. Uh, the Proverbs uh, in the book of... Uh, uh, Proverbs. Let me read Solomon the, uh, yeah, says, Act, no, don't Act, do that. Yeah, Acts uh, 1 to 11. Yeah, 5, 1 to 11. Now, a man named Ananias, together with his wife, Sapphira, sold a piece of property. With his wife's full knowledge, he kept part of the money to himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is that? How is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you've lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept yourself some of the money you received for the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, but you've lied to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. Hey. And great fear seized all those that heard what had happened. Then some young men came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried him out and buried him. Three hours later, his wife came, not knowing what had happened uh, to her husband. She asked, Peter asked her, tell me, is this a price you and Ananias got the land for? Yes, she said, that is a price. Peter said to her, how could you conspire to test the spirit of the Lord? Listen, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you also. At that moment, she was struck down, and she fell and died. Then the young men came in, and finding her dead, carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear seized the whole church and all who had heard about the events. What are you trying to tell us with these two? I'm, I'm trying to say that uh, we have repeatedly said 
that uh, Hakainde Ichirem and his government should tell us the truth on how much he has sold our assets. There's this lie by his minister saying that they didn't sell. When you transfer 51% shares, unless you are Kabuswe, maybe Mayor Kabuswe, you don't understand the working of what the meaning of transfer of shares is. When we were transferring shares from ZCCM, we were the shareholders, a shareholders. When we were transferring shares from government, from ZCCM to say Mopani, there would be cash coming in the treasury. These people are lying. They are exactly like Ananias and his wife. And I want to explain it this way. Mopani was sold for no money to the treasury. Let me explain clearly. First, you need to understand that Glencoe walked away having said they were not interested because they were being pursued in England, in wherever they were. So they tried to offload their assets because they were being followed for fraud. That was the reason why President Dede Galungu went in. It was not a malicious takeover. They said, we don't want these assets. Take them. That happened to Namibia, other places around the world. So now, when they were exiting, they had done several investments, new shafts, new developments, new smelters. Those assets are still there, meaning it was a going concern. Now, here comes my Ananias Hagainde Ichirem. He says he has found an investor from United Arab Emirates. Yes, but before then, he tells us that they were advertised bids, and there were 10 bidders who bid. They reduced that number of 10 bidders to four. So we were expecting that these four were going to submit further bids to give us offers for the, for the shares of 51%. We were expecting cash in the pot. Now, what does he do? He hired Rothschild. Rothschild we are paying them 45, we, we are paying them $15 million for advertising, for receiving bids, for evaluating them, for shortlisting. From nowhere, Hagainde comes with his friends from, from Dubai. Dubai. From United Arab Emirates. Uh, these people never bid, they never presented you to Bali. For my sisters, we shall go no moon to Gatashi and Sokolo Galeto to Bade. What do I have for you? Is that normal? It's not normal. So now, these people, they come from nowhere. Every day, he made three or four trips to Dubai. Now I know why he went to Dubai. He went to court someone else who, was not, who had not brought to Dubai to Rothschild our Shibukombe. Because Rothschild was our Shibukombe. So he agrees with this Dubai company. They kept on saying Dubai company, Dubai company. They never told us. Finally, when they hand over, then it, hell, hell breaks loose. It's Delta and it's uh, Jubilee Metals. Now, this is the Anania parallel. This is the Anania parallel. Hakainde Ichirema never advertised the Mufrila Black Slums. Mountain. Mm. He never advertised it. He goes to South Africa, gets a company called Jubilee Metals, and says his best friend, Muna Antuba, is going to be on the board. But who are these people? The Jubilee Metals from South Africa, you've heard Leon Corsa is coming in. You've heard who else is there. I want the Zambians to know that some of the other shareholders have been saying a South African f brother. It's Matthew Posa. Matthew Posa was the one who tried to ch challenge uh, President Cyril, Cyril Ramaphosa. Ramaphosa. Now, listen to the Sadiq politics. You are president of Zambia, you are chairman of Sadiq, and you are giving your assets to the one who is opposing your brother, uh, president, in another Sadiq country. Matthew Posa is a shareholder on Jubilee Metals. Now, he takes this Mufrila dump and says, 
So you people, I give you the Mufriland dump, and Muna Hantuba will also be part of that. Now, then Mufrila dump belongs to Mopani. My wanna deal wapa. These people from 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 so-called Dubai, they offer for the money to purchase the 51% shares is $650 million. That is the price which, at the time that uh, uh, PF took over uh, uh, Glencoe, when you look at what has been paid, the amount of metal that uh, uh, Glencoe has sold, you should actually be saying we don't owe Glencoe hundred and one point five billion dollars. We owe them six hundred and fifty. This is what they've come to on the table. That Glencoe will acquire those shares at six hundred and fifty million dollars. But In international that, resource holdings will acquire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We are international resource holding through Delta will acquire uh, our shares at six hundred and fifty million dollars. Now I would have been very happy if my dear brother had come to Musokotwane and said, here is $650 million in the treasury of the Republic of Zambia. But the sad part is that the, the money which is supposed to be realized, now this I, whatever, the Delta and the whatever, they are saying this money is going to go in the mine as, as investment, further investment. It's like mwebo na ngutatua kwa tama no. Tule isuka kwa ifipalakasa. It's like me renting out a house. I sell a house and then someone says, the money which I'm paying you, repair the house, but I'll get the rent. This is exactly what has happened in Mopani. We sold 51% shares. The money is not going to control 99. The money is going back to do you know, further development work, buy equipment for Mopani. Mm -hmm. But then we, uh, what's my share as a national? What's my share? Yeah. Then the balance of the money, which they are saying, no, Kabusu was saying, no, there's 400 million which is coming. Ni balls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no way coming. 130 million is a loan. It has already been received to pay. Uh, to pay wages and other suppliers. They want to lend another 80 million. Then the 400 million they are saying, this will be borrowed by Mopani as and when the need arises to put in further investment. So mm. the net effect, there is zero. This Ananias is telling us, we, the apostles, that, no, I brought you money, but there's no money. There's no money. There's not even a bottle of morphine at UTH. People who are dying, uh, who are need palliative care, there's not even swabs at UTH. And you take the money, you take the national wealth, you mm. give to your friends. Now, look at the, how, how useless these people are. He takes an asset of Mopani, which is Mufrila Dump, that black mountain in Mufrila. He gives to Jubilee Metals. Jubilee Metals goes into partnership with Delta. So basically, Jubilee Metals is coming into Mopani through the back door. And this is where we are saying, this is Haga in the Ichilema acquiring our assets. You can call me names, you can call me hoodlums. I'm saying, Ananias, stop it. Mm -hmm. God is going mm -hmm. to strike you. And, mm -hmm. and you know, this is not nice. When we tell them the truth, then they begin to cook stories like, oh, she owes invest trust money. Huh? Uh, oh, she owes DBZ money. You see, this is the behavior of lunatics. This Do is you... the behavior of people who have no brains. They, they are liars. Madam and President, they create Madam stories. Madam President, um, I saw when you raised the concerns on the sale of KCM, you've questioned, um, I think, the standing of uh, Vedanta. Like, uh, like everyone has expressed concern, Vedanta currently is not in good financial position. It, it has a bond, a similar like euro bond, that it has um, of about $9 billion. And it's been going uh, through its own debt restructure. Uh, the debts were due. They couldn't pay in 2023. They were pushed to 2027. 
Vedanta is struggling. Vedanta is bankrupt, financially bankrupt yeah. and morally bankrupt, unacceptable and unwanted in India where they originate and delisted on any stock exchange. So yeah. where are they going to raise money? The, the grapevine says they approached the Minister of Finance and wanted a, a sovereign guarantee from us. We must guarantee a bankrupt company to go and borrow money. But when they pretended that they were putting money in, into, into KCM, it was just a book entry. So mm. when these people say, this is how much you owe them, I am asking for an international audit on Mopani, books, I am asking for an international audit on KCM. Simple. These are simple requirements. We don't need to be Apostle Peter in the Bible to ask Ananias to be honest. Yeah. We don't need to be that. Was, but we was, can remind I actually, him. Yeah, I was actually coming to that. So when you have raised these serious concerns about KCM and Mopani, then they are saying no, because you owe money. Uh, with Investors Bank, you owe money with DBZ, just for our viewers. Do you owe these people? Of course, this is a mechanism they bring so that we, we stop discussing the most important issues. They go to personal attacks. Instead of discussing the ideas that you are raising and the question you are raising for them to answer. You just read part of the scriptures there about someone who plans evil for another person. God doesn't like that. And I think you need to read them, John chapter 8. Because, let me say clearly, this story that I owe DBZ money was concocted by Mwetua. The chief government spokesperson. The, the, is, is he a chief government spokesman or a chief liar? <laughs> this this is bankrupt, mentally bankrupt young man called Mwetua. He's the one who concocted that story that I owe DBZ money. Personally, individually, or through my directorship on any company that I've owned, I've never been a client of DBZ. I want Mwetua to come out in the open. And I challenge Kalyaria. He's sitting on the books. Let him come out in the open. The Bank of Zambia government. Yes. Or well, since and DBZ is now is under, uh, his under office. Bank of Zambia. Yes, mm. they say they are going to publish, but they can't go beyond just, just concocting these lies. I've never in my life owned an account at investors. I don't even know how they would lend money. But this is them. When you tell them the call, me, I have said, and this arose last week when I said, you, Imenda, stop telling useless stories that but we are hoodlums. But to Imenda, the Secretary General yes, of Yes, he said yeah. that uh, these people are commenting on uh, uh, Mopani, they are hoodlums. I don't know what the meaning of that, but you see, these are mentally bankrupt people with no intellect of any sort. And unfortunately, they can say anything. I always say this, that uh, in the main world, sorry, Ambassador, in the main world, when you come across gentlemen who have no gray matter, they resort to the very basics of life. When it's a woman who has challenged them, that's why my sister in Kenya told them that we want to discuss things above the belt. <laughs> when, you, when you challenge them intellectually, mm. what can Batuke say? Nothing. Mm. Here are facts. Matthew Posa is a shareholder in Jubilee Metals. Go online, you find it. My question is a political question. Why would you sour the relationship between Zambia and South Africa? UPND and the ANC. Because those are the two ruling parties. I expect that UPND should be able to get good things for Zambia because South Africa will always affiliate with the uh, government in power. Why would you go? Uh, it's, it's like uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa coming here openly to come and finance this Nawakwe. What would be the message to Hakainde Ichlem and his government? That's the point I'm making. It's in politic, and these are politicians in South Africa who, other than having shares in some companies, they can't tell us what they've done to deserve ownership of a critical asset in my land, like Mopani. And therefore, I was proposing, which works, that we have a Lusaka Stock Exchange. If truly you just want to raise 50 million 
because this so-called Jubilee Metals has gone to uh, the Dubai company and borrowed 50 million. You've seen that. Mm. It's a triangle. It's a triangle. How dull can you be? And I want to be heard so that these brothers can wake up. How dull can you be? You find a billionaire in a, a Dubai, I, whatever, RH. Then you say, hey, here, go and lend money to Jubilee Metals. And Jubilee Metals will come and invest in the dump heap. Mm. Meanwhile, set up a canteen called the Delta here. It is a special purpose vehicle. They work in Zambia, but in collaboration with the Kantemba from South Africa. Companies which never bid. This is where the story of Ananias is squarely rests on Hagai Ndeichilema's head. He is facilitating theft, looting, and taking our country backwards. But moving forward, are we going to continue generation after generation? handing over our prized assets to foreigners. This is an era where the prices of metal have gone so high. This is a time when you could have gone to the same Dubai IRH or whatever its name is mm -hmm. and said, you are a big buyer of copper. Can you put uh, 200 million on the table? And in mm -hmm. the next six months, because our shaft is just sitting there, we can process the dump heap in Mufrila. That same 50 million which is being brought in as shareholders equity should have been money to prepay for processing of the dump heap and deliver copper and cobalt to the person whom Haga India has structured a deal like he's buying cattle in the plains to say, give me this cattle, I'll repress it. He could have gone there and said, the dump heap requires $50 million. There's maybe 3 2% copper in there. It will take six months to process and put the system there. And can in we fact, do price? Ma we call them uh, forward Madam President, contracts. Madam President, Article 210, so Article 2 of our Constitution is very clear. It's very Any clear. Any sale or transfer of um, major asset of our country, and they've been defined, shares or actual asset, must go to parliament. I think this is as a result of our people's experience in the 90s, where major assets were sold and were rushed. And uh, to protect our people and to protect ourselves, we introduced that clause in the 2016 constitution that if any major asset of our country is being sold, can parliament vote on it two thirds majority? All these questions you're asking, like who is international holdings? who owns international resources. They would be answered in the house. They will be answered in the house. Who is Jubilee Metals who assigned this joint agreement with Mopani? Hey. Where is the money that they are paying us? They're saying they are paying 1.1 billion. They are saying 400 will go to Glencoe and the 600 has to be invested in the mines. These questions, if they had followed the law, would have risen in parliament, but they've denied now, an opportunity. This, this is the point I make. There's an allegation that we owe Glencoe 1.5 billion. Tell me how Glencoe has accepted 400. You get my point? Yeah. I have been saying, maybe I'm not very clear, that Glencoe collected their money. Glencoe has been paid. Some of the suppliers to, Mo, to M, uh, Mopani were paid by government. The debts owed by Glencoe to some suppliers, the government was dismantling them. So you cannot say we have cleared so much owed to Glencoe. That's a false accounting. That's why I've been calling that we need auditors. So no, now fact, that fact, money... Yeah, in fact, the, the facts are very clear. Um, government lent in 2021, this CMIH, $150 million to pay Glencoe. From 2020, when the asset reverted to Zambia, and the CMIH accumulated 100% shareholding in it. Glencoe has been selling our copper. As agents. For the last three years, how much have they earned? They are only willing to accept $400 million because, because they they've know recovered. they've recovered the money. But it's stupidly, stupidly, Kabuswe, Mayor Kabuswe. Why are you calling him Mayor Kabuswe? Because I want people to know that when you say PF is corrupt, 
extend it to Mayor Kabuswe. He was mayor for PF up to what, 2021, except they that? didn't adopt him. And then he jumps ship. Now he's clean like satin, like okay. swaddling. I like. So yeah. I want to, when you are accusing others of corruption, extend it to your people whom you are eating with. This is the point that we make. These people, Glencoe, they should not be anywhere near the asset. But how naive can you be? These people, they say they have not sought. But the sale agreement is online. It's online. And the, the, minister. And, and, and the minister is talking rubbish because ZCCM has advertised and put it on the Lusaka Stock Exchange. This is a contract. So maybe the minister hasn't got enough education to understand what a sale or a non-sale is. Because I've heard this voice by said it hasn't been sold. It's just transfer of shares. Okay, I excuse him. He's mayor of Chingola, so I excuse him. He doesn't understand. But I expect Hagaende Ichirema to understand what a share transfer means. And he ran in his minister and said, don't mislead the people. Don't be Ananias. Don't be Ananias. So the stupidity of the whole thing is that Glencoe is supposed to be completely out of the picture. Naively, these people, they brought back Grenko on the table. They've said that when the price of copper is above $12,000 per ton, Glenko will be involved in a price participation. Me, we had that, you remember? Yes. When yes. the price was $2,000, we said, if should it go beyond $4,000, $4, yeah, yeah. then we sit at the table and say, hey, you were only expecting $2,000, now it's $4,000, let's look at the cost and let's share here. It was taken out. Now, for, it's okay for a foreign company to be involved in a price participation clause. Who is supposed to have gone? Who was, you know, transfer pricing? The challenge with Glencoe, they are heavily involved in transfer pricing. That was a lawsuit in England and other places because they say you are swindling the developing nations who are supplying metals. Glencoe would bring a company and say, this company is supplying turbines, for example, for pumping from underground. But the supplier is their own company. They mine the, the, the metals, they are the transporters, the process, the transport, the sell. In Switzerland, when you get to Switzerland, they are the buyers. So they were doing transfer pricing. So that was the case that was being preferred against them. Now, these people, they still want them on the table. There must be a lot of sweeteners in the context of Anania, which we are not able to see. Hey, Anania, is this a price of Mopan? Yes, it's a price of Mopan. Shut up. You people don't know anything. You hoodlums, you borrowed money from DBZ. Uh -uh. The question is, Anania, is this a correct price? This asset, Mopani, can be the backbone of our nation. If we have a smart leader, the, if we have a leader who is selfless, if we don't have an Ananias in the office, Mopani can be the backbone because we don't need to do anything on Mopani. If you think that you can go to NAPSA, take $600 million and put on the road for three years, you can actually sit and do financial planning with that $600 million. You can take 250 after all, they are only putting 130. You can take $250 million, put in Mopan, it starts operating. If you need further money and take the money from NAPS and say, okay, uh, we'll pay for what it takes to do the road in one year. This money, let's put in Mopan and generate money. Because immediately you put cash there, you start generating money. Immediately you put money on the Black Mountain, you start generating money. That money can be available for the hospitals, for the roads, but the challenge which I see is what you and I can see. If Hagainde doesn't answer the reason for giving away the Black Mountain to his friends, Matthew Posa, and I've challenged them, let him say whether this Leon Kotsi and Matthew Posa have not been to community house. Let him say, for all I know there are regular visitors there. Muna Hantuba is his personal friend. They are like and phone and uh, they, are, they are like phone and SIM card. One is a uh, one is a phone, one is a SIM card. So 
he has basically taken an asset of Mopani given to his friends, and through the so-called JVC, they are all shareholders in Mopani because Delta is the subsidiary company of the so-called financier who has financed Jubilee. Jubilee is a joint venture with Delta. So, Zinopindira uh, Nava. Uh, th this, for me, is where I lose the respect with these guys. They have no mercy. They have no empathy for the nation. They have no interest for Africa. And leaders like this cannot even deserve to be called L-O-E-A-D-A. -E -A. You are not a leader. You are just Ananias. You'll be smitten. You'll be, you know, read your Bible. Maybe you conclude by going to, to tell them that God hates liars. John chapter 8. Read for them. I, I was searching and said, why do we swear by the Bible? A John chapter 8. You are in eight. court, you swear by the Bible. You are saying, I'm going to tell the truth. And the Bible is saying, don't tell lies. I hate you. Please, uh, John 8 verse 44 says, you belong to your father, the devil, hey. and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding on to the truth. For there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. For he is a liar and is a father of lies. Yet because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. That's self-explanatory. Why is Hagain there withholding information? Because he's lying to us. And when we call him liar, we cannot call him by any other name. If you lie, if you tell the truth, you are the Lord's son. If you tell a lie, you are the devil's agent. You are the devil's child. So lying to us, that you've got investment from Dubai, when in fact you are setting up a company with your friends from South Africa. And I always ask, what is the role of Valentine Chitaru? Because he's like the official advisor to the president on privatization of the mines. He was the chairman for ZPA. You recall that? Hakainde was the consultant. So now they've met. They've never separated. Whichever company you look at, which they run together, whether it's half like, it's Muna Antuba, Valentine Chitaru, Hakainde Ichirem. Whether you go to Benefit Consulting, it's Muna Antuba, Valentine Chitaru, Hakainde Ichirem. Whether you go to Sanlam, they will cover this in uh, some other names and say, no, this company doesn't belong to them. They want to tell you that, no, if I say Jubilee Mentors, then I shouldn't say Matthew Post. That's how they transact. When I go to Sanlam, Hagainde Ichlema, Valentine Chitaru, Munakupia Hanto. Now, honestly, these are not your father's resources. These resources belong to the people of Zambia. And uh, in another life, these resources will be your witnesses. Because you must remember that when God made earth, he put different resources in different places. In the DR Congo, we have cassiterite. We have other precious minerals. They are witnesses for the Congolese people. And when I say witnesses, God will ask our copper when they, the minerals, because when the children of Israel were crossing the river, said, stop there and pick up 12 stones. These will be your witnesses. When he says these will be your witnesses, it's not like... He's going to put you in. He will ask the witnesses, the stones, the copper. I put you in Zambia. Did you do a good job for my people? Did the people in Kalikiriki get clean water? And the copper will say to God, no, sir, my dear father, I was given to foreigners who looted me for the benefit of their nations. Then God will say to Emerald, hey, stone, come here. Did you do a good job? No, 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 no. I was being exploited by other nationalities other than Zambians. Are you telling me that today 
If these people really wanted to develop our nation and they wanted money, we could fail. If we can raise $650 million to put on a road, and then if also we, even in that road, structure special purpose vehicle, the owners of whom are Hagainde's friends, our Mwandi, Mutuereko, Tatua Bapataba brother, we just see greed. Greed. And bridled greed. The insatiable appetite to call themselves millionaire at the expense of Zambian people. There is absolutely no way you can take money from NAPSA, put on a road, and instead of giving uh, the road development agents to collect the money, if you think they don't qualify, put ZRA there. Instead of doing that, you give to your best friend, your finance manager, the one who financed your campaign, for 25 years to collect money. ECAO left toll gates. The most lucrative toll gates in this republic are between Lusaka and the Copper Belt. And Haka and HLM has handed that already before the road is being uh, even constructed to his friends. You know, this kind of uh, greed is dangerous to the state. It's called corruption. This endemic theft, this is endemic corruption, is so bad. When I was Minister of Finance, I took over a structure from my late elder brother, uh, RDS, Ronald Damson Pence, who had taken over from our elder brother, late Emmanuel Kasonde. We said to World Bank and IMF, this program of restructuring, we don't have money. We can't pay consultants. So, we got grants. That's how you had the Harvard boys. That's how you had Rothschild. But Hakainde is telling me that the, the people on the, on, the, on the treatment in UTH have to look for iodine and swabs to get themselves supported in the surgical ward. And he's able to give a Rothschild 15 million, $16 million dollars as fees from the treasure. He's able to give Lazard 45 million for restructuring the debt, the, the euro bond. Isn't it uh, Bari? Do you remember what Bari said? Yeah. When, 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 uh, when uh, uh, the then Minister of Finance, Dr. Wadiangandu, hired the same Lazard for $5 million to restructure the euro bond, they said they'll cancel it is theft. Hakainde is paying a staggering $45 million to restructure the same quantity of euro bonds. And we are going to even pay more money. There's nothing that they have done here. So the same company, but the same work, he's moved from five million which PF wanted to pay to $45 million. What can I do with $45 million in Karikiriki, Chaisa, I mean in these peri-urban clinics? Honestly, mule kwa to oluse kuba na baba nenu, mwebo, mweba leedi ya kwa mistake, mule kwa to oluse kuba na baba nenu, abantu ba leedi from street. Abantu, you know the, 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 the anxiety in people, the suicide rates in our nation have risen to untold proportions. We have never had so much violence in our community that has risen because of the hardship put on the people by the state through these badly thought through programs. They don't think about the political and economic ramifications of what they are doing. For him, it's just, no, I'm the first. You are the first. When you take $45 million plus 16, that's over $60 million given to consultants. If you are smart and you think it is not smart, show me how smart you are because I'm challenging you that for us, even for petroleum, when we were restructuring, we used to get drawback. You pay for a, a, a shipment of 90,000 metric tons. As long as you advertise openly, 
there are windows at, in Washington where you are allowed, because we are under stress, where you are allowed to present your bills and they pay you back. That's what we are doing ourselves. We, basically, we were not paying for petroleum products. Because when I went to Minister of Finance, I found that we were using copper. And what I'm saying can be done. Bashamtete is not anywhere. He's around here. Talk to him. We were buying every, every month. We are putting aside 5,000 metric tons of copper in Mitsui, in Mitsui, who was our buyer. And we told them this money goes to a, a bank account. When we need to buy petroleum, this is the money we pay. When I looked at that, I discovered that when you want to raise a letter of credit, there is a, a letter of credit which is 90 days on site, and your money is sitting. I realized I was borrowing my own money. So I said, no, come on. This money, every month we put $5 million, 5,000 tons worth of uh, copper into cash. So when uh, the copper arrives at Missouri, they pay. By the time we need a letter of credit, we have cash. And, and then, because we advertise for competitive tenders, check with Washington. I am one of a rare ministers who presented bills for Minister of Finance, and they were retroactively financed. Mm. Well, what, what, retroactively mm. financed means if I paid 20 kwacha, I go to Washington to the World Bank and say, here is my bills, can you pay me back? And they pay me back the money. So I'm accumulating money in the account. That's why by the time I left the ministry, I left enough cash in the account. So now, you are a businessman, you are smart kids. Sure, demonstrate it in action. Don't just talk, talk. Demonstrate, because if you are smart, you should know that our shares in Mopani are not for sale. You can actually get money now. Everyone is looking for copper. Everyone is looking for copper. Everyone is looking for silver. In you, fact, the, the price is predicted to go beyond twelve thousand dollars. So they will be paying why, that money to. That's Glenco. why Glencoe can, can confidently put that in the clause, because it knows it's the price of copper. It's going to go to twenty thousand. Yes, it's going I to mean, go nothing but high. Let me ask my last question. This was a special. Don't program. ask me the last question, because <laughs> let me put it this way. Yeah. When I was minister, there was cobalt. Do you hear any story of how much we're earning from cobalt? Zero. I asked this question at another forum. They told me that Kansanshi doesn't produce cobalt. I said, where is it going? I said, ah-ah. Uh -uh. You're talking, these UPND people, where have they come from? From the bush or where? Cobalt is a twin sister of copper. I don't know what metal you find before cobalt. It's gold, molybdenum, cobalt, copper, silver. Those metals occur in that order together. They are twin sisters. And God, look, it's not just Kassen said it. It's, it's God in the mines. But you know what is happening? These miners, if you go to some province, northwestern, there are international flights landing and taking off to other countries. It's like what was happening in the Lower Zambezi, where people just land, parking, uh, wildlife. wildlife and fly off. Are we so down? We want to move. Zambians should say, I think you, our brothers, are not doing us a favor because you look like you are locked in poverty mentally. Yeah. So yeah. you can't think because right now, copper is the best metal on the market. And therefore, you don't need to get to sell your shares. You just need to do forward contracts. You go to this one, I'll deliver 20,000 metric tons in, in September. Give me $50 million. You go to, people want forward contracts for two to three years ahead. They can pay today. It, it's like out growers, when you want to get soya beans, you pay. You deliver fertilizer, you deliver the inputs. You say, Mkanipa seko soya. Na go up and do my Please. Listen to us, Vipuva, Vihudram. In fact, um, Madam President, this is what I was coming to as we begin to close. Um, for the first time in the last six years, both KCM and 
Mopani were 100% owned by government through the CCMIH. With the prospect that uh, copper is going to go but high, why did we decide to actually even look for equity partners or sell at all? If, for example, NAPSA and Workers' Compensation Fund can produce $600 million for a road, wasn't there mechanisms to allow the CMIH to run the two mines? The CMIH is a company listed in Lusaka, in London, and in Paris. Couldn't we allow the CMIH to raise the kind of money these so-called investors are bringing? We could. I have, I have demonstrated in this discussion that the underlying theme is that of Ananias in the, in the books of uh, Acts of the Apostles. The concept that you want to always to hide the true value of the assets. That's what you read in the Bible. He goes to the apostles and says, I want to contribute to the work of the, of the mission of the <clears throat> spreading the word. I'm going to sell my farm. No one asked him to sell the farm. Exactly like Hagain de Ichilema. If we were given an opportunity to discuss openly without being shrouded in secrets of, I know I'm going to, we would have made these suggestions. If we say to ourselves, beyond us, we don't have colors, we don't have political parties. Beyond us, we are Zambians. We are bound by one umbilical code called Zambia. Beyond us, no one, no, no foreigner, no one from Mali would develop our emeralds for ourselves. West Africa is boasting of superb five-star hotels. When you walk around there, they say the money came from Zambia. Zambian emeralds. Zambian suglite. So it's like we have an underlying case. And it starts from where we are. The deep schisms between us. When I talk, I'm a hoodlum. I'm a borrower. I am Jezebel. I am this. So there's no time devoted to intellectual gymnastics. Where we can say, where is the Shamtete? Let's go and find out what he thinks about Mopani. When I was Minister of Finance, I'm not a miner. I never went to the London Royal School of Mines. I never went there. I went to Imperial College of Science and Technology on Environment and Energy. But you have the sixth as Mulenga. Look at the superb report that Dr. Mulenga produced on KCM. And did he produce it alone? If he needed a metallurgist, he went to... He, there are enough resources, human resources in this nation, but we don't want the leader who, unfortunately, we cried for and we were given is such that he's a proper Ananias. He doesn't want to discuss development for the nation. And the, the, the tragedy of the whole thing is that you and I understand. You and I know that these things are doable. But if I'm an economist, I shouldn't pretend to be a miner. And that's why when I was Minister of Mines, when Anglo-American called for a meeting with us as Asia holders, that they wanted to put ZCCM under receivership. Mind you, they were the big shareholders for the entire ZCCM. Mm. They wanted to call and say, for us, this country, there's no future, just put it under liquidation. What would a, a simple girl from Kalingalinga University do? Did I have the mining experience to push these people off the desk not to liquidate our ZCCM? We wouldn't be talking about mines now if I'd gone along with that proposal. I simply went to the copper belt for one week of tutology. The engineers put me in a, in a room Mine by mine, minister, please, don't accept these bullies to liquidate us. These are the assets. The challenge here is investment. If we can get investment, we can get here. This mine, they are telling you that it has three years to go. This mine has 20 years. Which mine has closed since we privatized almost 30, 40 years ago? In fact, Zero. When, when privatization was taking place, there were reports that um, th there was no life in those mines. There were no lives. 
In fact, the biggest life for that was given was only 15 years. 15 years. Mm. So mm. which mine has closed because there was no life. But what Anglo wanted was to put the assets under receivership. The way they've put investor trust under receivership, knowing they want to come back door and pick it up. I mean, you and I don't have money to go and pick up the assets of investors. Why would the governor raise the reserve ratio only to put a local bank under receivership? Why? Why? And the only people with money. So, uh, West Africans, that's why Access has picked up our other local bank, Atlas Mara. These people are dumb. And I have no apologies. This is the dumbest government I've ever come across. Because even as a woman, I had a little bit of knowledge. I didn't understand mining, but I asked the Mine Workers Union, what do we do? Talk to the engineers. You sit with the Mine Workers Union, you sit with the engineers. They put me through one week of tuition. When I was in the Ministry of Finance, it was myself, the Honorable uh, Vincent Malambo, and the government workers. There was no engineer there from the mines. But I talked like an engineer because they had tutored me. I told Anglo American, I said, get off. If you think that these mines are worth nothing, here's one dollar. Walk away. Would they walk away? I actually threatened them that by the time it was Jack Holmes, by the time you get to the airport, if you walk out of my office and announce that we are under receivership, because me as a shareholder, I'm not doing that. I want us to put a technical team together to give us a report on the future of the mines, a joint technical team. And that was the announcement that day. Everybody was on tentacles waiting that when the meeting is over, there will be an announcement there is receivership. There was none. And I want to tell you, you can call me your names, but I think I'm a smart kid. Not that I knew, but I had the wisdom, the discernment to know that uh, the engineers on the copper belt, that's their life. They went to school to learn how to mine. They are geologists. They are whatever. They will tell me. What are the problem, Madam, is all the technology here. This mine, which they are telling you is five years, Niboza. We just need new pumps to pump water out of Mufrila. We just need this and this. Please, please, you cannot allow these crooks to liquidate us. And that's what happened. So now, here, at the time, the price was $2,000 per ton. Here, now we reach $9,000, $12,000 per ton. We are in a better place by all standards. We don't need to beg. We don't need to borrow. We don't need to bring partners. But what we can bring, we can bring management partners. In, in we fact, can when, hire engineers yeah, to when, advise us. When Honorable Kabuswe announced that, I held the press conference and announced that KCM was handed over back to Vedanta. Mr. Aniu Agao, the chairperson, the owner of um, Vedanta, issued a statement and he stated that he's very pleased with the announcement in Zambia, but sadly said he will take the assets of um, KCM to shore up you know, his, he, his investment, uh, you know, his difficulties what, that, that's what he is was happening. talking about. Then he said, uh, Concola Deep, you know, as reserves worth over $200 billion. Of course. I have said that's the richest asset we have. So you, you, you feel sad that, first of all, we're giving back Vedanta, Vedanta to use our assets. But, uh, but Vedanta has already started uh, uh, soliciting for someone to buy their shares. Mm, mm. And those were in our hands. Why wouldn't we ourselves take those shares Take maybe 30%. Go on, a, since the system was listed, is listed, we go on a London Stock Exchange and raise capital from there. Okay, Mr. Kabuswe won't understand. When we list 30%, different people buy. It doesn't mean we still own them. We have sold that 30% to get the money. When we finally mine and start making profit, we pay dividends to those people. If you we understand there is, there is a fear. There is limited in exposure <laughs> of certain people. Honorable President, there is fear that um, 
the president and his team might begin to sell our assets. There is a genuine fear. No, but they've sold in APSA. Assets have been sold. So, they advertise. <coughs> it's in private hands. They are yeah. raising this money to put on the road from liquidating assets which Super Kenny left and built. Yeah. Uh, so out of 33 portfolio, which are under IDC, state-owned enterprises where the president is chair, 13 in the year 2023 made losses, uh, among them DBZ. And we have seen what has happened to DBZ, where now it has literally been closed by the central bank. We have seen what has happened to Invest Trust. Invest Trust is our asset because the CMIH in 2010 bought out, I think, yes. 71 percent shareholding from you know the private investors two companies are underway literally closed then you have KCM and Mopani that were hundred percent owned by us through the CMIH also now privatized is this fear genuine that by the end of five years maybe you, you know Zesco will be not, dismantled it's and not even a fear it's a reality I want to answer this way this is the highest show of incompetence by a sitting president. Because there's absolutely no way need to put uh, invest trust under receivership. Okay? Because government has deposits. Government also is a client. So why is government banking with the Stanbic, uh, with the access? Why not bank with their own institutions? I, why, why would you have Z, ZICB struggling to raise money when you are a deposit holder yourself? Because, you know, in my time, you said the bank of first choice was Zanaku. Government deposits be in Zanaku. Now, you find that you can't sit there as Musokotuane raise the, the reserve ratio, and your own bank, which is chaired by the president, is going under. <laughs> and what are you going to say to the other operators? In, in fact, since I first, mean, it shows the highest level yeah. of incompetence and ineptitude. Since 1st February, one of, the one of the monetary policy issues that Central Bank issued was what they called zero balance yeah. policy, How? where they pulled out all government money by, by state-owned enterprises, by ministries, by provinces, by agencies like ZRA, and they retreated all that money to the central bank. But in fact, some of the difficulties that you are finding in banks raising that statutory reserve is because the central bank has removed... Has become a commercial bank. Has removed all the money that ministries keep in the banks and they've taken it to the central bank. So I was just buttressing <laughs> your point that, for example, if a, if an invest trust bank, which is your banker's government through yes. the CMIH, mm. you know that you can tell ZRA that well, the, the, the these deposits. deposits, the next three months, put them there to shore up their, you know, their liquidity and the but bank survives. But where are they banking? Look, look, mm. at, look at this situation. Because we have not improved on the capital requirement for setting up a bank. I think it's still $10 million. At uh, some point, it was $2 million. I'm saying $10 million in Quach. I haven't just checked. But so when a local bank is distressed to raise $10 million, Quach, mm -hmm. the only people who can raise that money are foreign banks. Because it only takes 500,000 US dollars for access Nigeria to transfer to Zambia and buy uh, Atlas Mara. But these are our institutions. This is where we can go. And the foreign players, whether in mining, in banking, in any sector, when the chips are down, they pack their bags at home. What are your last words, Mama? I brought you for a special program on Mopani and Concola. My, my last words are this. When God created earth, he put us in specific locations for a purpose. You are a leader, Hakainde Ichirema, at this point in time for a purpose. Stand up, give direction to where this nation should be in the next 30 years. Forget your appetite to do personal business while in office. And this idea 
that you can get business people to your house and think it's by the cover of night. My brother, it's a noose for you. I want to say this term should be the very last, the very, very last when a leader leaves office and is being shepherded to the cells. I want it to be the very last. I want to say, let us have honor for our past president. And equally, that's why I'm so clear when I'm talking about Hakainde's leadership, because I want him to enjoy his retirement. But when the call is made, even if it is not before a commission of SCA, even if it's what I dream that maybe we can just bring people to a commission of inquiry and say, how much money did you make from the Mufrira dump heap? Even if it has to be that, I don't want my president to be found wanting. I don't want him to be found wanting. And when I say stop getting private visitors to your house to transact and construct deals, it is with love and care for my country. It is with concern for your retirement and your future. And, uh, and therefore, the story of Anania needs to find a home in your heart. You are a Christian, you saw by this Bible. Be honest to the people who put you in that office. Thank you very much. Uh, our dear viewers, we're hosting on a special program, Honorable Edith Nawakwi, FDD President, former Minister of Finance, and she was former Minister of Energy, distinguished career in public service. I thought we could take time and just discuss the issue of KCM and Mupani. I hope that you are enlightened. And Madam Edith Nawakwi, thank you for coming and for coming at such a short notice. I hope that uh, this will enrich our debate and will compel government to make all these documents public and will compel um, government to realize that these are national assets. They are family silver. Yes. And we have a duty and right to ask these questions. They shouldn't call us bitter that we owe money to who only because we're asking questions on behalf of our people. So um, with those few words, I would like to thank you. God bless our country. God bless Zambia. Shalom, shalom. Thank you.